Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has today issued Decree 40 of the year 2020 ratifying the agreement on the establishment of the Joint Cooperation Commission between the government of Bahrain and its Indonesian counterpart. The two sides signed the deal in New York on the 25th of September 2019. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has issued Decree 41 of the year 2020 ratifying the agreement on the establishment of the Joint Cooperation Commission between the government of Bahrain and its Kenyan counterpart. The two sides signed the deal in New York on the 26th of September 2019. The Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, has donated 10,000 high-quality multi-use masks produced by its affiliate productive families to the Interior Ministry. The move is in line with the recommendations of the Finna Khair Campaign's Coordination Committee, which is in charge of distributing aid. The RHF says Sec Secretary General and the Coordination Committee Chairman, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid Lamin, said that the initiative aims to support the national efforts to combat the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. It is also in line with the directives of His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor on the RHF's Board of Trustees Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Dr. Sayyid highlighted the ongoing cooperation with the Ministry of Interior through a series of initiatives, including the Your Feed at Your Home to deliver food baskets to the needy citizens and residents at their homes, in addition to the Ministry's distribution of masks to those who need them. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 5,677 with 14,696 total recoveries and 57 registered deaths. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact, moreover covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. In international news, the total number of confirmed cases of the deadly coronavirus in Saudi Arabia surpassed 150,000 after the kingdom record or recorded a 4,301 new infection rate. The Ministry of Health announced today that the country now has 150,292 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The majority of the cases were recorded in the capital Riyadh, where health officials detected 1,091 new infections in the last 24 hours. Hafouf recorded the second highest daily reported number of cases, with 430 infections having been detected in the area. The other new cases were recorded in cities and provinces around the kingdom. 45 people died of the coronavirus today, which brings the total number of virus-related deaths in the country to 1,184. The United Arab Emirates recorded 393 new coronavirus cases, which brings the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 44,145. Emirates news agency WAM reported today that the new cases were detected after over 38,000 COVID-19 tests were conducted across the country. Two people died of the virus today, raising the total number of virus-related deaths in the UAE to 300. Meanwhile, the number of recoveries rose to 30,996 after 755 people recovered from the virus. The rate of infection has been considerably falling in the country in the last uh, three weeks, according to Dubai's COVID-19 Command and Control Center. Kuwait recorded 604 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours as 678 people recovered from COVID-19, raising the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 38,678. Total recoveries, according to the health ministry, were at 30,190. Kuwaitis make up 51.82% of the new infections, while non-Kuwaitis expatriates take up 48.18%. Five people died of COVID-19 in the past 24 hours, bringing the total number of virus-related deaths in Kuwait to 313. Kuwait yesterday announced that the nationwide curfew will be reduced starting from June 21st and will be from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. local time. Oman detected 852 new coronavirus cases and six COVID-19 deaths in the last 24 hours, raising the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 27,670. The Ministry of Health said today that the virus-related death toll reached 125 out of the newly reported cases. 368 were detected in Omani citizens and 484 were detected in non-Omani expatriates. 55 people were admitted to facilities to be treated for the virus. Meanwhile, the number of recoveries rose to 13 
19,974. Iran said its novel coronavirus case uh, load uh, passed uh, the 200,000 mark today as authorities gave provinces the power to reimpose measures aimed at stemming the spread of the virus. Official figures have shown an upward trajectory of new confirmed COVID-19 cases since early May when Iran hit a near two-month low in recorded infections. The health ministry said another 2,615 people in Iran had tested positive for the virus in the past 24 hours. That brought to 200,262, the total number of confirmed cases since the country's outbreak emerged four months ago. Also, 120 fatalities in the past day had taken the overall toll to 9,392. Dozens of Palestinians protested today in Ramallah against the Israel's, uh, Israeli plan to annex parts of the West Bank. The demonstrators marched holding Palestinian flags and popular front party flags as well as banners. Some protesters could uh, be seen burning tires, creating makeshift roadblocks and throwing stones as heavily equipped armed members of Israeli's uh, security forces approached. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to annex the Jordan Valley and all of Israel's far-flung West Bank settlements. He has signaled he will begin moving forward with annexation next month. The Arab League today announced plans to hold an urgent virtual foreign minister's meeting to discuss the escalating conflict in Libya. The meeting, to be held at Egypt's request via video conference, comes as fighting continues between rival administrations based in Libya's capital and the east. Arab League deputy head Hussam Zaki said that coordination is currently underway with the current session's head, which is the Sultanate of Oman, to determine the meeting's date, which is expected to be next week. The Board of Governors at the UN's nuclear watchdog has passed a resolution critical of Iran, the first of its kind since 2012. The resolution calls on Tehran to provide inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, with access to two sites in Iran in order to clarify whether undeclared nuclear activity took place there in the early 2000s. Iran has been blocking access to the sites for months earlier this week. Iran warned that such a resolution would be counterproductive and it would take appropriate measures in response. Despite the row over the two sites, the IAEA says it has still the access it needs to inspect Iran's declared nuclear facilities. Turkish bombardment had killed five civilians in northern Iraq, according to reports by Al Arabi and television channel today. A Kurdish shepherd in northern Iraq was the first known civilian victim of Ankara's air and ground assault on the region. The shepherd was killed early Thursday morning when Turkish airstrikes hit the Brados district on Wednesday. Turkey launched a cross-border operation to the mountainous terrain of northern Iraq, where the rebel Kurdistan Workers Party, or the PKK, has a rear base. The Turkey, or Turkey has sporadically bombed PKK hideouts in northern Iraq, but its new operation is a dramatic escalation and has prompted scores of families in the area to flee. Egypt's Minister of Water Resources and Irrigation has blamed Ethiopia for the lack of progress in the latest rounds of negotiations on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, the GERD. Ethiopia hopes the 4.8 billion U.S. dollar mega project on the Blue Nile will allow it to become Africa's largest power exporter. Both Sudan and Egypt have major concerns about the potential negative effects the dam could have on their own areas of the Nile. Ethiopia rejected a proposal that the three countries should reach a binding agreement in accordance with international law. Egypt says Ethiopia's position was to agree on guidelines only, which could later be unilaterally amended by Addis Ababa. At least 23 people were killed in the central province of Al Baida in Yemen during heavy fighting that broke out when the Iran backed Houthis moved to surpass an uprising led by powerful tribes. The Houthis had launched missile and drone attacks on Radman district before deploying forces on the ground to surpass a rebellion by local tribes known as Al Awab. The aerial assaults hit buildings, killing three people. Yesterday, at least 20 Houthis were killed after tribesmen foiled their advanced tower, Radman. Tensions between Al Awad and the Houthis have been building up since early last month when the Houthis refused to punish local fighters who had killed a woman. 
Meanwhile, the last of three large shipments of medical supplies landed in Yemen today following an initiative to boost the war-devastated country's health care system as it battles the coronavirus. The shipments represent a different path to humanitarian relief in Yemen as the UN faces a drastic shortage of funds for its operations, even with the virus surging across the Arab world's poorest countries. The Hail Said Anam Foundation has helped create the international initiative on COVID-19 in Yemen. The partnership brings together UN agencies with a host of companies. We're talking about uh, a shipment that has over 400 ventilators, over 1 million uh, personal uh, protective equipment. And so it, it will come in and fill in the gaps, but there will always be gaps that the international community must ramp up and come and help in Yemen to, to fill. This virus presents yet a further threat into the country that is already fighting uh, the world's worst humanitarian crisis. And so today the health system is already under massive strains. And so it's very, very important that we all as a private sector to, to join up our forces to, to try to help the public health authorities. New Zealand police said an officer was shot and killed and another wounded in the leg today in Auckland after what began as a routine traffic stop. They said a bystander was also hit by the suspect's car and injured. Police said officers were carrying out a routine traffic stop when they pulled over a car carrying two people. One of them used a long-barreled gun and fired at the officers before the car sped away. The incident sparked a large manhunt after the lead shooter and a companion fled in a second car. The second officer was hospitalized with serious leg injuries, while the bystander was in a hospital with minor injuries. Both were in stable condition. In lighter news, it might seem like science fiction to many, but a robot delivery service is becoming in one of UK's towns due to the ongoing coronavirus outbreak. Customers make their grocery or takeaway order with an app, track the six-wheeled boat bots as they make their journey, then open the lid and retrieve their order with their phone. Starship Technologies says it has doubled the number of homes it can deliver to in the English city of Milton Kynes and grown its fleet to over 100 robots. Robots. The San Francisco-based firm, started by two Skype founders, has been running a robot delivery service in the English city 75 kilometers north of London for over two years, completing over 100,000 deliveries. Earlier this year, the company launched in six new cities, including a grocery delivery service in Washington, D.C. People that may be self-isolating at home, vulnerable family members, can get their groceries on demand um, in a contactless way using our robots. They don't have to go to the store, they don't have to leave their homes, um, and it's convenient saving them time, and it's a very uh, safe solution at the moment. We covered uh, tens of thousands of homes in Milton Keynes before the pandemic, but we've more than doubled the amount of homes that we now can deliver to. Uh, we've more than doubled our delivery robot fleet to more than 100 robots. It's the largest fleet of delivery robots in the world and we're actually launching new areas on an almost daily basis as residents around the country and specifically Milton Keynes get in touch to say can we offer delivery to them.